Hey everybody, this is uh, CJ Miller doing a, a, a video for my YouTube channel, which currently has no subscribers, but that's cool. Uh, okay, so this is the bridge uh, that goes between uh, Shreveport and Bossier City, Louisiana, uh, Texas Street Bridge, and it's a wonderful and beautiful uh, they don't light all the lights all at any given time. Uh, it's programmable so they have different patterns they can use. Uh, as I get a little closer, I'll walk a little slower so I can get kind of some of the ambiance of the bridge as a pedestrian. I'll walk, oh, maybe about halfway across it. Then I'll pause the video and uh, pick it up. Uh, from where the real beauty, I think, of this bridge really shines through, and that is uh, the river view of the, of the bridge. But so as we're walking across it, um, I think this is kind of going to be the standard display. The overseers of this project are taking, uh, I forget the site, but you can, you can look them up if you're local, and uh, think of patterns and designs for the LED lights. And they are, I've seen it all lit up as they've done testing, because I live downtown, I watched some tests in preparation for all this. And it's uh, ridiculously awesome and uh, bright and vibrant. Uh, just lately, they had a display that um, honored the Ukrainian color, so it's blue on top and white on the bottom, and uh, yeah. Um, it's hard to get much from up here, and as you can see, it's lit uh, at the base also. What I'm gonna do, checking some of this out, is I'm going to pause this video and then I'm going to take it up uh, I'm gonna take it up uh, you know uh, on the ground of the downtown tree for it hey this is just a quick um, little thing uh, we have this Holiday Inn that's lit up with LED lights and uh, there's all, all sorts of displays downtown of private businesses doing LED lights that are thematically going to uh, kind of go in with, with, with this bridge. It's great. It's going to be great for the, uh, for the local scenery. But continue on. I mean, you know, hang on. I'm going to pause it. And uh, I'm going to catch this uh, bridge from underneath, from the ground. Okay, so just because I don't want to lose the video, I'm doing little bitty glimpses, but uh, check this out. Um, this is some more LED light uh, of some local businesses from the bridge. I don't quite know what this bit of artwork is about on the bridge, but I like it. It's a lady sitting under a rose, and of course, I think rose is kind of like the unofficial flower of Shreveport. Uh, had to do with the first riverboat, which was, oh my god, I think it was Harris. And uh, it was the, the boat, uh, the, the river casino barge was called the Shreveport Rose. And it did so well that they actually had to bring in a bigger boat. Okay, um, so I'm under the bridge, and... Uh, you see, there's actually some beautiful lights under the bridge if you're a pedestrian and you walk. Let me close it down a little bit. Um, I'm going to walk under it until I get to the river. And then catch a glimpse of those uh, illuminated, moving uh, patterns of the LED lights. But yeah, oh, I don't need this small. Yeah. It's kind of... Neat. There's all sorts of little LED touches. I don't think there's too much except for the occasional uh, light lighting fixture. 
uh, like LED lights, they're not new, they're not uh, extremely inventive or anything like that, but they sure do look beautiful and they go a long way to liven up uh, any area. I, you know, and the, the casting the, uh, of uh, the surfaces above them, it's beautiful. I myself, I'm looking for LED bulbs uh, in the near future for my apartment to display in my windows because it faces downtown, but so the effect that it has on this particular uh, piece of, of tile work, this mosaic, that's beautiful. And here we can see there's green, and then there's blue, and then right across it, the uh, newly uh, branded uh, Bally's Casino. It used to be El Dorado. Before that, it was uh, Hollywood. Uh, before that, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I forget. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, like how I said that? my little southern accent I forget I usually for the most part train myself away from my uh, deep uh, native southern American tongue my you know from Louisiana and everything uh, uh, it's always gonna slip out though uh, and it's not because uh, it's not because I have any sort of shame I'm very I'm, I'm filled with southern pride I just want uh, there to be no distraction or no confusion. I don't want people to confuse uh, my Southern pride with endorsement of, uh, you know, old Southern racism, which is basically the same thing as old American racism. Uh, not to do that whole North and South thing, but you guys had slaves too. Okay, no, I'm not gonna stop. Okay, so, there is, this one thing down here uh, that's been flickering and I do know that they are uh, working to fix that flicker to make it uh, uh, you know compatible with the rest of the bridge but aside from that let's just take a moment and look at this bridge and see the color as it changes This is one of these things when you're driving over it, it's hard to appreciate the beauty uh, because the lights are further apart. But the further you step away from the bridge and the further you observe the lights, the more vibrant they actually become because by perspective, I suppose, they look closer together and therefore they look somehow more intense, more intense, you know, if I'm, if I'm saying this right, it's a perspective thing. Uh, meaning, uh, it well, it's going to give new perspective when I begin painting again, it's going to give a new dynamic because when I'm thinking of pigment, I'll think of it in this term when pigment, points of pigment are far apart up close they can actually be more intent but the further yeah it's like because of the shine factor the further away you are so if i'm doing stuff like this especially with uh, any sort of essence that has radiation such as a uh, lighter star or something like, you know the further away you get from it uh, really the the more intense it should appear even if smaller I, I don't necessarily know how I'm going to work and translate this into a painting. I just know that it's an effect that I've become fascinated with. And I love I love the changing uh, colors of these lights. Now they've looked at this little thing and they've thought they uh, someone speculated some some person uh, that I met randomly speculated that it was probably a programming problem and I'm like well you know if it's a programming problem then you just track down the programmer and you have him rewrite the bit of code that controls that light uh, and it should match uh, 
the other side the value should be equal to that of the lights on the other side <laughs> which control it uh, the same way and then that flicker will stop my hunch is maybe that could be it maybe they're just gonna have to get the programmer uh, back over the, the code writer or whatever but my hunch is eh, it could be a little bit of a uh, software issue or something like that but it also could be hardware if I were to look at it as being that it would just be a matter of getting some getting somebody getting somebody over here uh, just to write the code for that one light really because this one light creates makes that it makes that beam like that so it would just be um, getting someone to come back over and tend to that one light they'll eventually get around to it uh, all in all, though, this is a very beautiful effect, and, uh, yeah, I love it. I love, uh, how it shines off the river, uh, and I love when I'm riding from the, uh, from the interstate, there's a, there's an interstate behind me that you can't see for the trees. Can't see the interstate for the trees, but um, as I'm riding over that overpass coming into downtown, there's a mirrored bridge. Uh, I'm sorry, a mirrored uh, building that all these lights reflect off of. Also, so we have like the colors from the river being reflected uh, from the bridge and the the moon because and the and the other lights and everything looks beautiful. And then that uh, and this casino here, these lights uh, and everything. And they reflect off of a uh, mirrored building. Now, the mirrored building has been here since I was a boy back in 1903. So, um, yeah, it was a cool thing. Oh, you know, check this out. I don't get to see this too often or I don't pay it too much attention. But you see, that is the front of Margaritaville over in Bossier City on the other side of the river. And they have some wonderful... LED lights that that look extremely vibrant from a little bit of a distance. So, yeah, this is great. Um, you know, uh, and truly, the further back I step from this, let me walk over here. I'm gonna walk over and check out the river real quick before I end this video. I'll have to, I don't really think these things through when I talk. I'm, I'm non-scripted. I'm, I'm entirely improv, improvisational. Except for maybe the beginning when I try it out and it's like, that sucks. Let me stop this video and let me start again. Uh, I've done that a couple of times. But for the most part, it's unscripted. <sighs> the further away we get the more of the picture we can see. And this looks beautiful from a distance. I live on the eighth floor of a high rise. Now it is a rent controlled, uh, cheap ass uh, high rise, but I love it. It's home. It's, yeah, it's my little safe harbor until something comes along. And uh, I am for anything that creates beautification. Uh, whenever uh, they have these things lit like fully, because uh, that's not even like all of the lights that they have lit, you know what I mean? Uh, like I've seen this thing like just, whoa, lit, lit up, lit up. When they first opened it, I was looking out the window, it looked great. Um, and of course they were like doing so many fireworks that the, you couldn't see the lights through the smoke of the bridge. But yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I love the progress. We've needed some of this attention uh, in uh, downtown Shreveport. I love my city. I love my area. I love my neighborhood. Downtown Shreveport is a neighborhood. Uh, there are more, there's, it's more residential than there actually are businesses. But, you know, it's like, you know, I want everyone nearby who's going to be coming through uh, or if you if you're tour, touring and maybe maybe you're going all the way down to New Orleans or Mardi Gras or something like that and you're driving well then take a little side detour through Shreveport and and come see our bridge you know 
Or if you're on the interstate, take a look over and see if you can see the bridge from a distance. You know? Uh, or, or, better yet, really take a detour and come see our wonderful, uh, you know, river walk down here. Um, you know, the world's getting better. I feel like, I feel like we've kind of come to the, you know, I don't want to jinx it. But we're getting to a place where more and more people are vaccinated and they have their boosters. And as more and more people have been uh, exposed and have uh, overcome and have gotten like better immunity uh, to the COVID uh, and the different strains of it that might come out and everything like that. Let's just really hope that we can get to a place of some sort of... Uh, I don't think we'll ever have the uh, innocence. Uh, in my generation, we won't have the innocence that, uh, of what sit what a pandemic is uh and i'm just going to go on record to say that i was alive in the in the 80s and uh i i uh, came of age in the late 80s and so uh i was very aware of what uh hiv disease was doing uh to uh in particular gay men, but also uh, people uh, of impoverished, uh, uh, what's the word, situations, uh, you know, that, that, that we didn't have the access to uh, the information uh, or, the, or, the, or the, the access to the medications that were making it. But it's, I mean, I remember that, but that was epidemic, but they didn't call it pandemic because they focused on you know, they focused on certain people in certain situations, whereas a pandemic, there was no, like it wasn't based on a situation. It was based on, oh my God, if you're in close proximity to someone and they have it, you're going to get it. You know, like if, you know, so everybody shut down, you know, so I, uh, and that really, um, you know, so that's two of them that, that, that I've, I've survived through. I don't know that the innocence will, will come back in our generation. What I do hope is that history will serve to give uh, future uh, generations when they're faced with opportunities of how do we uh, deal with an impending, uh, a possible pandemic. So I, I hope that they can, you know, go ahead and just, you know, shut it down uh, before it becomes an issue. But I do think, not not a you know, complete, you know, nonpartisan opinion on this and non-expert, but just go well. I don't know. We're all a little bit of expert because we all went through this and we all have firsthand knowledge of it. So let's not minimize that. We all have a little bit of expertise in, in what it's like to be through a pandemic. And I really do think that at the first sight of, you go ahead and shut everything down and tell people to stay home forever you know until 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 it's safe to come back out you know what i mean you get you give it you, you know you treat it as uh you know your life depends on it because it might you know and then so i think if you can do that at the beginning of a viral pandemic then um lives can be saved and uh if nothing else, uh, the last few years have proven that if we have this sort of crisis, uh, you know, that we can get through it. You know, we have we have reserves to get through it, you know. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Let me get back to the beauty of this bridge, man. I love it. Like, I, I, I promise you the entire thing was not about... <laughs> Not about my pandemic thing, but look at look at how beautiful beautiful this is. And so now, uh, yeah, and I love this style too. You know, in this in the eighties, neon was everything, and this was a neon lit bridge. But the but the bulbs didn't really li light. It was a different design too. They were like long neon bulbs, and uh, it was great. But it was kind of like a, okay, it was kind of like interesting but we couldn't quite get it what was it supposed to be people said oh it's supposed to be like you're going down the uh, mouth of a steer or the something 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 but it really didn't look anything like that to me 
I think that was just something people said. Oh my god, it kind of reminds me of. But I don't know if that was the intent. Uh, and there were all sorts of things. I remember it was a... Was it 1993 when it, when it was lit up? Or 1992? I think it was the summer of 1993. Or the fall of 1993. I don't know. When they lit that neon bridge up. And I was there. I was on top of it. I had 60 or so couples getting married. They did that when they lit this up too. I mean they kind of like recreated it. Um, I just kind of watched from my window downtown from a distance. And then I watched some. Because I didn't want to be around the crowd. Because it was still. Hey you know. There was still a, a, a Omicron variant floating around. <sighs> okay. We always keep coming back to that huh. I don't know. I don't know that we'll ever reclaim that innocence so they, they like we'll we'll have a collective uh trauma but aside from that aside from that um i love this i love this uh led lighting style and that colors are getting brighter and things are getting slicker and styles are looking nicer and uh you know, during the pandemic, I saw some clothes in the mall. I actually would not want to buy any of them. And I'm pretty, I'm a pretty edgy guy, even even at my, uh, even at my age. I, I mean, I like to buy the occasional trendy thing, but there just really wasn't that much I wanted to buy that was trendy because it all looked like ripped clothes with bits of spray paint all over it, and it uh, it all looked like graffiti, like urban graffiti. And it's like, okay, that's kind of okay, but you know what? Why not actually think about uh, creating a style that that's actually stylish <laughs> and not looking like something that was used to mop out the bottom of a garbage can? Sorry if uh, you're any of those designers that, that created that look. It was... I don't think it's... You know, if you're going to wear something like that, I think it's kind of cheating. I mean, I understand the occasional ripped jean or something like that or... or, or or whatever for that for that occasional punk flare but really if what's going on if really what's going on is if if your clothes are going to be you know worn and, and and uh you know don't 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 you know don't buy clothes that have that destroyed painted on look fucking buy some clothes and then wear them <laughs> and earn uh the rips and tears and stains and the comfort of, of, of looking like that. You know, do that. Okay. Uh, boy, I slipped into some soapbox stuff, huh? I love this bridge, man. I love my city. I hope people will come see it and visit it. Love you. I love you. Bye-bye.